Hi everyone, um, I'm, I'm Jessica Colley, so for those of you that don't know, I'm basically uh, been part of a local family for quite a while, and uh, I basically work on a, a principle of nostalgia. Nostalgia is what gets my gears moving, what gets me excited. It's also my thought process of figuring things out, and what I thought we were, we were going to do today is we're quickly going to have a panel on uh, what made me a furry and possibly what made a lot of you guys a furry as well. And uh, during this panel we're going to have a lot of intros, a lot of old stuff, and uh, it's open discussion, so as you see something that, that you think has turned you into a furry, feel free to bark, howl, screech, whatever you want, so that we, we, can, we know who it is that got affected by this. So, uh, you can, as you can see from the, the front panel there, uh, this is what the media most likely believes furries are. It's, you see a furry, you look up for it. Uh, everyone here, we all know that that's not quite how it works. You need a little bit more than that. Or else, uh, I think like the entire population would be furry by now. So what I did is I thought back to my childhood and, and thought back about what the things I did uh, as a kid that might have influenced me today to become a furry. And the first thing that popped into mind was open time. So for those of you that's from overseas or those that, that didn't experience open time, open time was an hour long every Sunday and it allowed us to watch a pay-per-view channel and it was normally filled with Disney animations. Animations like... And if you don't like gummy bears, uh, so often you will also get... Uh. And basically, uh, it was all Disney-based, um, you had like um, quite a few different series on there. There was also like DuckTales and all bunch of others. But uh, every Sunday, the entire South African population basically got a whole bunch of anthropomorphic cartoons. Uh, during the day, you also had stuff like Brackenyan and a whole bunch of uh, translated shows that later on I found out was actually Japanese anime that we got retranslated into Afrikaans and English. And to this day, a lot of people don't believe me that uh, Brackenyan was actually anime and they still believe it was made by uh, some South African team locally. But what if you actually had paid TV? We also had a few other normal shows that kind of had the anthro thing mixed in there. So you had X-Men, which about one out of every three of the mutants had some sort of anthropomorphic thing to it. And I don't know about you, but my, my favorite character from the X-Men was Beast. I mean, what's not to love? The intellectual that was as powerful, he could lift a car, but also it was basically a half cat, half, half wolf, and blue. But the biggest problem that we've got with series is series came and went. And as a kid, I do like to think. Sorry, the, pan the actual panel was a bit mixed up. I was talking about X Men while it was actually Sonic, but I was going to leave that back. <laughs> but the best. Let's keep that quickly forward. But wait, there's more. There's, there's always more. been. Okay, so the problem was with it is game and went. So for every show that was anthropomorphic, there was also stuff that we were interested in that wasn't. I mean, you had like Spider-Man and you had a whole bunch of others. So definitely the thing that made us for it is can't be series because so it kept on changing. And let's face it, by the time you reach your late teens, you kind of grew out of the hole watching series and anthropomorphic shows. So what possibly else could have turned us into furries? <laughs> so then this actually struck South Africa and when this came out there wasn't a kid alive that didn't talk about the Lion King and didn't tell their parents to go to engine garage to fill up 
Because if you went to engine, you actually got more bolts with little more line key figures on it for around each. So for like a good two years after the movie, that was basically what was traded on the playground was these marbles. So movies had a big impact as well, but once again, it has the same problem as series. It doesn't have any staying power whatsoever. There's a lot of other movies you got interested in, and as you grew up, you start, stopped watching actually animated cartoons and things, started getting a bit more realistic, so it's definitely not movies. What about games? Yeah, Sonic. That has its own fan base and things today, as you might not may know, but clearly that can't be it either, because games change and you get new ones all the time. So let's move on with another game that you had on PC. I see some of you guessed it already. my go to just playing it, finding all the secrets, seeing how fast I can speedrun the game before speedrunning was a thing. But once again, uh, games has its issues. I mean, you can just go out and just buy games with anthropomorphic characters, but there's so few and far between that you'll end up having other media mixed into it. So we still have that exact same problem of what is it that made us furries? Speaking of, why furries? I mentioned Sonic twice, why don't I suddenly fall in love with the Sonic fandom and started drawing stuff like that? I mean, if, if it's just a thing of seeing things and then turning into them, then clearly that must be it, right? That, that's why there's a Sonic fandom, that's why there's a comic book fandom, that, that's why all of these things exist. Or not. There has to be more. And I think what happened was, I had a turning point, I think everyone in this room at some stage has a turning point where they discover something a bit more that makes them a bit more interested in the subject. And for me, that was this. Who knows what that is? Yes, RC. <laughs> Chat rooms. Yeah, it's Telegram before Telegram was Telegram. So basically, when I was 12, I was looking for a whole bunch of werewolf fan art. And I, I saw this uh, website. And the person at the bottom had a link to an RC Room and I didn't know what this was, so I googled it and I installed it. And I started hanging out and chatting with people. Suddenly, I discovered the community. And the community allowed me to talk about things I liked about 20% of the time. And 80% of the time, we were just sitting around talking about general things that doesn't even relate to anthropomorphics or furry or whatever. And you started actually learning other, that there is more to being a furry than just art, and you, you just discover things like your persona and role play and all of that. You start developing a character, you start growing up. And I think that's what the draw is. It's, it's not like the media portrays it to be like, you see a furry, you become a furry, or just like anthropomorphic art, so you must be a furry. You love Lion King, you're a furry. That's a few years after discovering RFC. I'm sitting at my computer, and uh, you can see I still love my Fantastic Four in the background. There, yeah, my bed is made of that. But most importantly, I think, if you have a close look, friend is confirmed. There's a plushie. So what can we learn from this? It is very exactly what other people portray it to be, is it just liking a certain thing and then being labelled as a furry by someone else, or is it a bit more personal? Is it the fact that you need to label yourself as a furry to be a furry? And I think that, in my opinion, is far more important, and that is actually the turning point, is that no one can tell you you're a furry because you like X, Y, Z. The person that likes it needs to tell you, no, I'm a furry because I like X, Y, Z, and here's my reasons for it. Here's my experiences. 
And the thing that strengthens this, strengthens this bond is community, and that's what separates us from any other fandom. And I've been a, I've been a part of the, the anime fandom, the comic fandom, the even at one stage the Sonic fandom. Mm -hmm. I'll just change the subject on that one. <laughs> and none of the fandoms that I've ever been a part of has what we've got. Has a community where no matter what your interests are, there are other people in the fandom that, that enjoys it. And even if it's not related to anthropomorphics or anything like that, there are people and that's you can talk to them and those get integrated into the fandom. So it's not just about being a furry when you're part of the fandom. So let's face it, if we are on Telegram, most of the day we don't talk about furry things. We don't just fill up the room with, oh, what's this? And that's what's important to understand about our fandom, and that's what separates us from everyone else. So at this stage, I just want to ask everyone, what's your story? How did you join? Anyone? Yeah. Carl, send the mic. Anyone? I can say something. Yeah, <laughs> For me, it started when I was quite young. I can't think of any uh, real trigger to it, as far as I can think back. Whenever I was a kid watching uh, cartoons, I always uh, really liked uh, cartoons with uh, animal characters, uh, anthropomorphic uh, characters. And I don't have a reason for that. I've never figured it out. That's been since I was a little kid, since I remember, since I could remember what I was watching. Um, so. Uh, yeah, anything with uh, anthropomorphic animals, a uh, secret of them going back, even uh, when I was probably about six, seven years old, there was a, um, a series on KTV called Little Flying Bears, um, and then what really hit it off in 1995 is when I watched the movie Bolter, and I've always liked wolves, etc., and that movie really got me interested. And um, you know, as soon as I got internet, I think around uh, 97, and uh, Google wasn't really a thing back then. Uh, I think I started off on Yahoo and then later moved to Dogpile, for those who might have heard of Dogpile. But I think one of the first things I, I'm going to say Googled, even though it wasn't on Google, was Balto, and I managed to find a community, a fan community on Yahoo groups. So I joined them and started uh, chatting with them, and they had uh, weekly chats every Saturday night. I joined, they had forums, and yeah, it was a community I was heavily involved in. And then uh, later when chats uh, evolved a little bit, um, I think it was probably around 98, towards the end of 98 or so, um, we started like posting art on the chat. And you know, and not a lot was uh, Walter fan art, a lot of it was uh, general uh, fairy art, which was very intriguing to me. And there were a couple of pictures I liked, so I decided to me find out more about this and it was basically the arts that attracted me there at the time and uh, it was only years later I decided let me see if there are any South Africans uh, maybe I can maybe there are people like this like me in this country that I can chat with maybe even meet up with and it was a bit of a slow progression getting into it I was a bit very awkward about it at first but um, yeah for me it, it was uh, I can't explain the origin of why I liked animal cartoon characters but uh, from there, it was just a slow progression of uh, loving the art and getting to know people and enjoying the community from there. Thank you, Bob. So, as you heard, our experiences are completely different and all of our experiences are unique. So, that's one of the joys of being a furry. There isn't one set way that you become part of the fandom. So, anyone else that wants to come? Yeah. Hello. Yes, now, <clears throat> I think the first shot through myself was when I, I think I watched Aristocats with my sister and my mother, and, and my father actually, and afterwards I said, you know what, I really wish I could meet these cats one day, because at that point I thought they were filming these cats doing their thing <laughs> somewhere in the US. And then my father told me, no, but they don't exist, they're just pictures. And I didn't believe that. And then he showed me some things on how to do animation. 
And I think to this day I'm still in denial that these characters don't really exist. Um, part of me, you know, you've got this dream of these furry creatures that live and breathe and got personality. And every time real life wants to wake you up, you hit the snooze button. Um, it's a lot easier nowadays because of the fandom and the internet and the connectivity. You don't really have to wake up. You don't really have to grow up. You can keep pretending. Um, a lot of my interest in developing my own characters was watching something, enjoying it, but being frustrated with something. You know what? I think they should have done that, or I'd like to see this character in that setting. And then you realize, okay, I've got the foundation, I can build my own world on top of that. Then you start living out your dreams as your favorite character, but you realize, uh, it's not exactly what I want. You get to a point where you start creating your own character. And you know, um, my, my first Anthro character was uh, the Deswart Wolf. And then I went to the Art Wolf. And today I tend to focus a lot on indigenous South African creatures. So today I'm a Kudu. Who knows what I'll be next year? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and characters are one of the, the biggest parts of our fandom, and uh, changing them, it's, it's also something that's very personal. I know a lot of you have a lot of different personas. I've actually had three myself, and then it changes as you progress through the fandom. I've kind of stuck with one for the last seven or so years. And then there's other people that might have six or so characters ongoing and just keep on changing. Well, if this was any other fandom, if it's not an exact Sonic character or an exact cartoon character, you can't do that sort of stuff. Is there anyone else that wants uh, the mic? Some time ago I heard an interesting comment, which relates to this, to what you said at the end of your presentation, which is that the Sonic fandom is for our fans of Sonic. The furry fandom is for fans of themselves. Mm. That's actually a very, very... And I can't remember who said it. It was some time ago when I saw that. Yeah, and then that's kind of what I was trying to hint at. And the thing is, the furry fandom is a very personal fandom. It's about you. It is not about what the other people make you out to believe or have the set rules of you need to do X, Y, Z to be a furry. It doesn't work like that with this fandom. I'm going to... Thanks so much. Yeah. I'm going to share a very brief story. Um... It's a difficult question to answer what exactly makes you a furry. It's uh, how are you going to define it specifically. Uh, in my, my instance, I would say um, when I was young, a little boy, um, my parents used to like just put movies on, like, which they knew I was interested in. It usually ranged from kung fu movies to fighter jets, shooting everything and whatever. But um, what really piqued my interest was movies like Lion King, movies like, uh, you mentioned Balto. Uh, when I remember I was like in the first or second grade. And uh, believe it or not, on one of the SABC channels, the movie Balto actually aired. And I was like, wow, this is like awesome. I'm going to have to try and find it. So I went like from, so I told my mom I want to like rent this movie and try to find it. So I went like from video shop to video shop and eventually I got it. And eventually she also bought the VHS tape for me, which I still have, Balto, one of the few VHS tapes I actually do have. And yeah, uh, I would say what really was the trigger point was maybe Lion King 2. I think that came out in 1999. And it's like, um, uh, trying to think what else could be the trigger point around there. But basically, I, um, like, uh, early to middle 2000s, started getting very interested in computers, uh, Googling everything. And then, uh, what really, what the real trigger point was the um, community, stumbling across the community. Because that, makes you realize there's people out there that also share your, your interests. And I would say if, if I have to pick a trigger point, it was stumbling across the community. 
that's what might mean you're like, you know what, this is actually a thing. Yeah, and the community is what centers us, it's what brings us all together, it's what allows us to actually have conventions and talks and share expressions and share thoughts. So I definitely agree with you there. Anyone else? Testing. Hello. Howdy. Hey. Ah, lovely audience we have. Um, okay. So from my side, the main thing that happened was I got interested in a lot of the Disney movies, Lion King, etc. Especially Robin Hood it was one of my favorites growing up. Um, but more than that, I got interested in things like Brother Bear, werewolf movies, etc. And the concept of changing oneself or just changing who you are, that really resonated very deeply with me. Because at the time, I felt very trapped where I was. I felt like if I could change into an animal or something else, I could escape from my situation. So that led me to go online and seek others who felt the same. That ended up with things like MIRC, uh, Windows Messenger, AIM, a lot of old school things, um, which eventually led to DeviantArt, where I met a lot of people and I started noticing that they had distinct profiles. These were anthropomorphic characters. I started asking about it, which eventually led to me finding fur affinity. And well, through that, I got connected to a lot of international furs for various reasons. And yeah, that eventually led me to finding the local fandom. So, in a way, it allowed me to come out of my shell and express who I am, just be myself. So I found a group of people that I felt like I related to on some level. And that was the main reason why I think I became a furry. Yeah, so in many ways, you can actually say that you did transform through your journey to find the fandom eventually and it did actually come out for the better because it, it helped you feel comfortable and normal and other people around you also with the same interests and things. It's very good. Okay, anyone else? I think we can do one more. Okay, no more tonight. <laughs> but thanks everyone for joining and I hope you enjoyed the panel. Uh, sorry it was a little bit rushed this year, but next year there will be a bit more preparation. Thanks everyone. Thank you.